is Bandesh from Cheskadra. Today, we continue our coverage of the of the 44th Chess Olympiad and some of the play, Uzbek players with, with the top two to three tactics that they employed in the 44th Chess Olympiad. Today, we'll cover the last Uzbek player uh, who, who won the gold medal with his team. The player is Shamsiddin Wakidov, who only played four games uh, throughout the 44th Chess Olympiad, but won three of them and just drew just one of them with an excellent win ratio and obviously being undefeated. So we'll look at two of his games and two of the best tactics that he employed in those games. Let's get started right away. All right, so this is game, this is round six of the 44th Chess Olympiad. It's some season Wakato against Krishnan Sasikaran of India 1. Uh, so a highly high rated player against uh Samsidan Wakido, who is himself rated around 2500. Um, and obviously, as you can see, Wakido is playing the black the black pieces while Sasikaran is playing the white pieces. The last move that Sasikaran made was Queen to C8, check, and obviously. Um, obviously the king has to move, so king to h7 by Wakdo. And now, you, as you can see, this pawn is racing to the uh, a8 square for promotion, but these two pawns on d4 and e3 are equally as strong for Wakdo, and he'll start pushing, pushing them soon enough. And once they reach these two squares, it will be trouble for the rook. The rook and the queen battery here can beautifully control this diagonal. The rook on this file secures this diagonal. Uh, the bishop takes control of this diagonal. It's the, just the beautifully placed pieces for for Wakido. Um, although the material, although materially speaking, both the players are equal. However, uh, positionally, Wakido seem a lot, lot stronger uh, in this position. As I told you, the places, the pieces are very optimally placed. Even if this pawn races to the e8 square, the bishop covers the eight diagonal. So at at most, uh, Wakido will have to sacrifice a bishop, a minor piece for that pawn, and he'll be done by like what two points. But uh, in the meantime, he will start launching his attack on the uh, on the opponent's side of the board uh, with this beautiful battery, with this beautiful rook, and these two strong monster pawns. So yes, uh, Sazikaran also has the idea of like starting to push his pawn. So he pushes it to a6, uh, rook to f2, not pushing this pawn immediately, although there is no harm in that, because even if this pawn is pushed here, uh, let me show you. Even if this pawn is pushed here, the rook cannot capture because uh, this rook on e7 guards the pawn on e2 like anything. But uh, okay, fine. Uh, Wakido says, I'll bring my rook to f2 first, uh, putting it on the same rank as the uh, as the opponent's king. The, the king is kind of boxed in here. It cannot go here. It cannot go here. Blocked by its own pieces. It's kind of smothered. Uh, if the spawn is ever taken, which is which can easily be managed because this bishop also kept, uh, controls the g2 square, uh, then the king will be in trouble. Then there will be some nasty discoveries that might just uh, uh, stem out. And if the king goes here, it's still the same. Like this check is horrible. This it's, it's just nasty. This check, this check, uh, caught by the after the exchange, the queen can just come in. It's a very very bad position for uh, Krishna Sasikaran here. Uh, so yes, rook to f two, uh, rook to g, uh, rook to g one, adding another defender to this square this pawn. Although it is de defended twice uh, and attacked twice. Uh, Sasikaran obviously does not want to take the risk because uh, this 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 square is this square could prove to be very very weak very soon, and you would not want the spawn to fall at any time, anytime soon. Uh, obviously, walking out just pushes the spawn. He's like, okay, you you be you keep yourself busy with the spawn. I'll just start pushing it. Maybe align my queen here and then just push it so that your bishop and rook cannot do anything. So uh, e two. Obviously, rook to e1 has to be played, um, but but uh, as the engine shows, this is blunder because checkmate is now un unavoidable uh, in favor of Wakido. Um, let me show you the uh, like I don't need to show. You. There were a few more moves that were played, 
so rook to e3 was played then rook to g4 and bishop captures on g g2 this was played and this is the position where uh, krishnan sasakaran of india won resigned the game and uh, sanjay then walked off won his game of round 6 against uh, against india and now let me just show you what happens here right uh i i played this out uh, on my own a little bit so i'll just show you what happens um after rook captures uh, after rook captures over here rook captures uh, oh i'm sorry i'm sorry oh after after bishop captures on g uh, g2 rook captures on g2 was played queen to uh, f4 king to uh, h1 uh and rook captures on yeah so uh, after this uh if if the if the rook captures uh obviously the rook captures it back uh king captures uh queen to queen to f f3 check uh, the rook uh, the bishop has only so uh, the king has only so many positions he can go uh queen to f2 check and this will be a very nasty checkmate um which it's just it's just it's just very nasty the position in which uh walk walk uh, sasikaran was placed so yeah that's the that's basically the line um this is another line that might have panned out uh, which is rook captures on g uh, g2 you don't capture the rook right away uh, queen to uh, queen to f4 check rook uh, king to h1 obviously and now you, you obviously resign because there's nothing much to be done here uh, <laughs> because rook captures on g g2 is coming uh, if okay after this move uh, one thing that one possible move is rook kept uh, rook to f1 check uh, the king does not have any spots left to go so uh, there are two ways to defend this either rook to g1 and that's that's all right but um then we just capture uh, capture and check um yeah so this is basic, this basically runs to the uh, through the same similar kind of line uh, to what the previous previous line would have only led to um however uh, this was the position in which uh, th this was the position in which uh, Krishna uh, Sasikar and did resign because there's not nothing much left to do here. Uh, rook captures rook uh, queen to g. Uh, yeah, this is just nasty. Um, so yeah, that is this is one of the things that uh, Sasikar and does. As I'm sorry, walk it out does. Uh, the pawn pushes when to push your pawn, when not to push your pawn. It's very important in an end game. Here, uh, obviously, Sasikar pushes his pawn, and this is the optimal move to make. Uh, but here, as as against the common instinct of any test player which is to push the e pawn uh, he decides okay let me wait I'll, i always have uh, tempo to move the pawn but i'll play rook f2 first so that is one thing there is tactic number 1 this is tactic 2 uh, round 10 of the 44 chess olympiad it's some sidin walked over versus davy whereas siguenas um uh, walked away playing the white pieces and it is move 26 uh, the opponent has just played king to g7, and here, as you can see, that this this pawn is uh, this pawn is attacked, but it's also defended very nicely. Uh, the two rooks are on the same file, uh, which is a which might just open up anytime soon. And uh, yeah, both the kings are castled, but the the black king is very weak with the g pawn, uh, having uh, having uh, doubled on the f file. So that there are two pawns on f. On the f file and g file is like semi open for the queen or the rooks to enter uh, into anytime soon. Um, the the white king is also exposed with the h pawn uh, having doubled on the g file, but uh, black is slightly worse over here. So here, uh, <laughs> uh, Wakido invites a sort of complicated move uh, series of moves. Uh, and the opponent accepts, he takes the bait. So knight captures on c what c2 was played. Obviously, knight captures on c2, rook captures on, on b3, rook captures on b3, queen captures on b3. And this is the plan that uh uh Devi Vera Sequenas had in mind. And okay, he'll be down by like what one point, uh materially speaking. 
but then this knight has no no good squares to go to maybe here uh maybe here it can go or it can go here uh it cannot go here because then this just falls even if it goes it doesn't matter where this knight goes like this this knight is bound to fall because it's been attacked twice and protected only once and there is no real way to protect both these knights together uh, so that was you cannot put your rook here because the bishop covers this diagonal nicely. C sixty one square is controlled by the bishop. So this is what uh, Davy Vera Sequence had played. Uh, I had planned, but uh, Walkido just smashes his dreams uh, entirely. He goes for the rook. He he, he spotted this move. Rook captures on d six, <laughs> and obviously you cannot start capturing anywhere over here because let me show you what happens if if you capture here. Let's say. Uh, then queen captures on on uh, f6. The rook and the queen are both here, and the king cannot capture back. The only move that the king has are one of the two squares. Obviously, if you go here, the the bishop falls with a check, and this is basically very nasty position for black because you you, you just lost an entire piece, uh, and you're down by a lot. And the other square is uh, king to g g8, but in any case, you just lose the 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 piece over here. And surely this knight is also hanging. But uh, now you you know you have all sorts of uh, discoveries and all sorts of attacks that might be might get launched. Uh, you can harass the black uh, king quite a, quite a lot now. You know with uh, a torrent of checks, and it's just nasty for for black. Uh, over here, so this is the this is the various this, this is the move that uh Vokito had spotted very prudently, group to d six, uh and obviously here bishop to g five is played to to sort of protect this this pawn on f six. Although the engine does suggest that bishop to f four would have been a better move, uh which which essentially which essentially blocks the queen's access to the f6 square and the rook cannot capture because the king can simply recapture. The queen cannot capture the bishop as it's protected by the bishop by the pawn. I hope none of you are thinking that the queen can simply capture. And here, uh, black, uh, white is sort of without a move, right? Uh, what what can oh, the white possibly play here? Uh, maybe, you know, uh, the white can try to uh, move the knight away from the square, put, put, it, on, put it on d5. So that uh, this pawn uh, can be recaptured anytime, but I mean it. it it's not much. Um, so this move was suggested by the engine, but uh, Davy Verasingwena goes for the bishop to c5 move, and uh, things just start falling apart for for White over here. Uh, ultimately, uh, Samsidin Wakidaw does go on to win this match. So. Uh, this is one of the th three games that he wins. Uh, the previous game in round six was also one of the three games that he won. Uh, we we have not showed the game where he drew the match. And so yeah, that these are the two tactics that uh, Uzbek Grandmaster uh, Sansidin Wakidov Walk employed in his very limited number of games. Uh, he was not given many opportunities in the forty foot chess Olympiad, but he made the most of his opportunity opportunities, and that's what that's what matters. So yeah, that's that's it for today's video. That's all from my side. I hope you guys understood the tactics and thank you very much for watching the video.